this is a picture of this boardroom. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. This is at Barbie Mattel. There's only white people in there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when people say, how come we're not getting these dark-skinned dolls? I would say there's no dark-skinned people in the boardroom. Mm -hmm. There's no one black in there. Yeah, there's no diversity in their group. And wherever you don't have diversity, you're not going to have good ideas because it's always going to be the same ideas going over and over and over again, which is why you're failing. So basically, a group like this, a group that looked like this, is the group that said the coolest monkey in the jungle. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. I'm not here begging or asking Barbie to do anything. In fact, keep making your corny looking dolls the way that they look. I am asking for other doll makers, um, like people like J. Mike and other different people that you know we know on the side. I am asking you guys to come out, you know, uh, with dolls that will have staying power. Um, because we, I as, mean, but that's easier said than done, or people would have already did it by now. It's like. It's easier said than done in the sense of people are scared to do it because they don't believe in themselves. No, it's not just that. You have to have capital <laughs> to do these things. There's, it's not. There's plenty, plenty of people of color who have capital. I don't mean they have money to just flush down the toilet, but they have money to invest. Four or five different people have, mm, I don't know. $40,000 to invest Right, and we've seen something. that with Pretty Girls. We've seen that with Fresh Dolls. We've seen that with these kind of spring-up doll companies that have tried to, like, you know, cater to that market. But I feel like there's more to the doll game than just people saying, look, I have a doll with dark skin. Buy it. You know, it's more to it than just that. There, there is more to it than that. There's a room full of white women, and that's why there's no diversity in the dolls. The dolls represent who's in the boardroom. These people are not thinking about black folks. They're not thinking about anybody except for white folks. They're not thinking of, even if they are gearing it towards children, they're not thinking about anybody except for white children. Okay? Let's give white children... So their excuse for that will be that white families statistically purchase more dolls than other ethnicities and therefore wait 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 that's cool if that's their excuse so what they're saying is the white children have stopped buying their stuff right okay so then why don't you just fold then they're not gonna do that exactly when in 2015 when they started making all these black dolls mm -hmm. the white families started buying the black dolls again if they're saying only white doll white families statistically buy our dolls not only just mostly mostly white families statistically buy our dolls mm -hmm. then mostly white families were not buying your dolls anymore but all of a sudden when you made in 2015 mm -hmm. when you made all of these fashionistas let's get around this word diversity that's just a synonym for more black people once we started putting more dolls that looked black and brown in our fashionista line that line blew up from 2015, mm -hmm. 2016, 2017, now 2018. It's like they're putting an emphasis. It's like they're trying to put the lid on the diversity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're trying to slow well, it down. Well, we already knew bit. that they were going to do that. And I mean, well, we predicted back when they did the whole Doll Evolves movement that once they got their sales back up to rising status as opposed to dropping status, that they were going to pull back on the whole diversity part of it and go back to their old ways which is just and they flood you to, with as much right. white imagery as they can and, and they've, they've done that with, do that with the made to move dolls well which, not only that the difficulty that we're having in getting uh the dark skin mountain climber doll it's mm -hmm. difficult to get her like you got to be in a certain kind of city yeah you know um a certain kind of walmart you know, or wherever you got it's this not, from. It's not distributed on a mass scale. And yeah. they're going for more urban populations, I think, for that um, demographic. Which is fine, but what about in the suburbs? These white families, who they say more white families statistically buy dolls, they be wanting the dark-skinned dolls too. But they're mm -hmm. not putting... These dark-skinned dolls out here with mm -hmm. these, quote-unquote, more white families um, statistically 
Yeah, that's their excuse to say that statistically it's not going to sell and that's how they get away with not doing it in the first place. Okay, It's so like now, a cycle. So now all we have to do, guys, is wait for their sales to go down again. Okay, so this is the cycle with Mattel, all right? Um, people are getting tired of these white dolls because we already have them. Well, we here's already- the other part of it, too, is that Mattel sales are going down because parents aren't buying them for their kids. You know, the kids don't have interest in the dolls anymore. But at the same time, adults who grew up with the dolls are still buying the dolls. And this is where the problem arises because the adults who are collecting, they are such avid collectors. They're so emotionally attached to Barbies that even if it's not the best price, even if it's not the best representation of diversity, even if it's not exactly what the consumers have been saying they want if they give us any crumbs that look similar to the meal that we want adult collectors will run to the stores and buy them up and that's where it's like we lose the battle because there's not enough strength in the adult community to hold off and not support financially certain lines or certain dolls that Mattel is saying here be happy with this there's not enough people that are strong enough to do that. They just cave in and they go running and buying it. And that's what keeps Mattel able to play these mind games with their consumers year after year after year. So it's not really about Mattel because Mattel's going to keep doing whatever they're doing until their pockets can't deal with it anymore. But So who is it about then? It's about the collectors. It's about people. It's about the consumers. Stop, yeah. Let's stop calling them collectors collectors because that puts... A connotation on them like they you know it's like a rock collector he's just got to pick up the rocks no matter what you call these people collectors even though that's what they are it's like they gotta buy the dolls no matter what what these people are is consumers you're collectors but you're consumers also mm-hmm. I think we should focus on the word consumers you don't have to just consume anything if they were selling shit sandwiches in the store you wouldn't buy it just because it's in the store being sold right so, but they're buying it because of the psychological attachment to barbie it's like it's it's a shit sandwich with the barbie logo on it and that's what's making them buy it you know what i'm saying this reminds me of what's going on with star wars the current star wars uh the force awakens and the last jedi and all that stuff um a lot of people don't like that the older people who grew up with the older star wars um you know um episode whatever they are and Empire Strikes Back and all of those those three. Um, those people are really being alienated by the new Star Wars. The new Star Wars is actually geared towards like women. It's like social justice warriors and like, you know, um, <laughs> it's just it, it's just changed. And they're trying to make this new Star Wars, they're trying to appeal to an audience that, I'm not going to say the audience isn't there, but the audience isn't as strong as the audience that was there. Yeah, they're trying to create a new audience, and that's where you always fall short in business. You cannot rely on making new customers to, to sustain your business. Your business, your business has more staying power when you have repeat customers Mm -hmm. when your old customers keep coming back and that is the issue so it's like the collectors the adult collectors we are those old customers that keep coming back and consuming but they're trying to make new customers and that's why they're not making anything that's trying to necessarily cater to us the loyal customers they're making stuff to try and get the attention of these new generation little kids well not really what they're trying to do what i believe is they're trying to get new customers but under the circumstances that they got the old customers meaning bobby's 59 years old let's go back 59 years to um when we didn't even have to make any black dolls Mm -hmm. (laughs) they're trying to get this these new consumers under the same rules as when they didn't even have to cater to anyone else except white people. The last time I was at... And that's why their stuff is going downhill. Because you can't just cater to white people. Now Mm -hmm. now you gotta uh, gotta cater to gay people. You gotta cater uh, cater to pansexual people who just have sex with whoever. You have to cater to uh, men. 
You have to cater to, you know what I mean? There's all these different people that you didn't have to cater to 59 years mm-hmm. ago when Bobby first came out and they were able to just, you know, dominate, mm-hmm. you know? That's why I think they're going down, they're going down. Sometimes I feel like Mattel, like Barbie specifically, not the whole company of Mattel, but Barbie Mattel, they have this kind of like un- unspoken grudge against the adult collectors because we've found a way to like like do it on your own well no we found a way to turn the products they're giving us into the product we want it to be like we've I, figured I, out how to I customize e, do it on your own yeah so you personalize guys gonna give me a black doll i'm just gonna spray paint repaint this one. you guys aren't gonna make this doll reroot Asian. I'm just going to totally strip all of the stuff you gave her and just, you know, put this type of makeup on her. Like, we've figured out how to do that for ourselves and also how to provide the service for other collectors by offering artistic, you know, services so that other people can enjoy customized dolls. And I feel like (laughs) Barbie knows this and they're a little bit salty. And that's why they have this love-hate relationship with the collectors where they try not to cater to the collectors so much. But then, at the same time, we're the ones that are keeping them financially afloat. You know what I'm saying? It's not the parents. No. And they're catering to the kids. Like, when I go through the Barbie aisles at stores, I don't really see a lot of parents trying to get dolls for their kids. Last time I went to Toys R Us, I actually saw a teenage girl walking through the... Um, Barbie aisle and her mom was like hurry up and pick something and she was like oh I want this and she picked out like a Barbie doll off the shelf and her mom was like oh my god you're too old for those find something else and the girl was like really upset (laughs) with her mother because she wouldn't let her have the Barbie and I remember when I was a teenager I the only kind of dolls I wanted my mom to buy me were like the Mycene dolls which was part of the Mattel line and that's what I was into collecting at that time um, because I had kind of fallen out of love with Barbie. But even as a teenager, when my creative uh, juices were flowing a little bit more, I could envision all of the stories that I could tell with those dolls as opposed to a different type of a toy that was more so-called age appropriate. So even through high school, I was collecting dolls. And it's like Barbie is upset at <laughs> the consumers because... It's not these moms trying to buy their kids dollies. It's older people that are trying to get themselves the dolls that they maybe either are they're trying to relive what they had as children or they're trying to actually, compensate for yeah. not having what they wanted as I, children. I couldn't afford it as a kid. Mm-hmm. My parents couldn't afford it as a yeah. kid. Now I'm grown, I can buy it. But let me switch gears a little bit. As we're looking at this scene, um, I was reading a synopsis for this movie. Synopsis, in her 59 years, Bobby has become a fashion icon, a lightning rod, and a target for feminists. Tiny Shoulders, Rethinking Barbie, featuring newly discovered footage and unprecedented access. Then it says dot, dot, dot. So I'm, a, I'm assuming the unprinted, unprecedented access means access to... um. Maybe the doll making process because when the movie comes on, they show someone painting the face, but we already know how to do that as repainters. And they showed the hair being rooted with the machines, exactly. But again, that's stuff that we already know. Now, as we're seeing this scene, they're actually in the boardroom. And I wanted to switch gears and say, think of the psychology of this. How desperate is Mattel? to allow cameras into their boardroom so you can see how they are racking their brains. I mean, look at these people. They, it's almost like a stressed. cry for help. Yeah, these yeah. women in it, they look stressed. They don't know what to do. They but don't I don't know how far you've gotten in this documentary. I haven't watched it, but I really do think at the end of the day, they're still doing the same old thing, which is trying to cater to parents and convince parents because i noticed that they also have been marketing to dads recently it's like they're trying to convince parents of this generation to do their kids a favor by introducing them to barbie and using that to play with their imaginations instead of all this digital stuff and let me say this i feel like people of color i think you should be happy that mattel barbie is begrudgingly 
uh, doing stuff with um, black dolls, you know, because this is how it's been in this country, you know, uh, something mainstream, which is white, mainstream is white, okay, something mainstream will start to not do good, and then um, to they'll get, add a little bit of they'll add black people mm-hmm. to come and help your thing have more flavor to it. Then it'll pop off. It pops off. Then they totally disregard mm-hmm. whatever black thing helped them. They'll right. even act like the black thing didn't help them at, at all. all. Mm-hmm. You know. So I feel like um, you <laughs> black doll makers, you black doll collectors, don't be mad at Mattel. As the industry standard, be happy that Mattel is so much trying to focus on um, this narrative that is Barbie is this. Like they at the beginning of the movies, they they showed all of these Barbies from 1959, and those dolls are not popping like that today. One or two here and there for nostalgic purposes will but... sell, but those are not. What is making the vast majority of the money? I don't care what their numbers that they have doctored say. Nobody wants these built Lily looking dolls. Not like that. People want these new fashionistas. You mm-hmm. know, like LA Girl, super popular. She don't look nothing like built Lily. Yeah, the I mean, modern dolls are selling better because that's what dolls. people can relate to more. But um, yeah, I mean, as as we are discussing this, I'm literally in the middle of customizing one of my dancer made to move bodies into a different color because that skin tone is too light to match some of the heads that I want to put the body on. And so the skin tone that every that the vast majority of people want is like not available. I think we actually have a video where they have that skin tone, uh this picture of us of that skin tone, the dark skin tone. They have a they have that doll in the picture, but you know, that doll is not anywhere as far as we know, in production and being um, sold to people. So anyway, guys, we just thought this was a very interesting movie, and I haven't gotten that far, but I didn't even need to get that far to look and say, look at these guys crying for help, begging for help. They're trying any... Like, I think the making of this movie, uh, the making of this movie, part of me, is a marketing scheme in order to get people more interested in their dolls. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Yeah, and they're using Hulu to do it because they know Hulu is a very popular streaming platform right, right now. Right. So, the, they that's would, one of the reasons why I haven't watched it because I feel like, well, you're not going to tell me anything new. Like, I already know whatever it is you guys think you're revealing to the public in this documentary. Come on, Barbie. Yeah. But, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I got to get back to painting my doll, but. Yeah, guys, and I just got to get back to being, you know, a dad here. Alright, so, um... Drop it in the comments if you've seen this documentary or if you're interested in watching the documentary, what your thoughts are on it, and whether or not you agree or disagree. Um, and as we progress through the documentary, I'm sure we'll do more commentary on it so we can further discuss other topics with you guys on what they're talking about in this movie. But that's all I have to say about the topic. And I don't have nothing else to say about these jerks. Alright, guys. We'll see you next time on another Dollcast, alright? Subscribe and follow us on Instagram. This is Gypsy. This is Adonis DeRo. Have a dolly day. I have to leave you